Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again. This is not another review, a movie review, because I'm done with movie reviews until June. This is my thoughts on the Stargirl pilot that aired yesterday on, on the CW and everywhere else uh, on the DC streaming service. How was the pilot? It was freaking awesome, I must say. I really liked the, the freaking tone of this show so far. There's some things I didn't like, but it's very minor gripes. It's not going to upset too many fans. And I will not be saying spoilers here because I want to save that with my friends when we talk about the first season when it's nearly completed. Um, it got some pretty good ratings. It says, uh, the, the you know, um, most of the sh people were watching it because it's the only DC show available right now that's not... That wasn't on hiatus. And uh, yeah, it says Stargirl solid for the CW. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Let's see what it did. The Voice, no. On the air, it premiered on streaming services this, on Monday, delivered 1.21 million. That's a lot for in the 2020s. And 0 0.3 in adults 18 to 49. That's me and Josh. For the CW, making it to the most watched series debut on the network since Batwoman last fall. To be fair, this is way better. At least this lead is young enough to do the show for like five years. Ruby Rose quit. Good. Fuck you. We don't, we don't care about you. We're not going to miss you. Um, and the best summer series premiere since Whose Line Is It Anyway? Well, it's not summer yet, so I guess it's like the summer movie-going season, but there's nothing in theaters right now, so that's why people went to see it. The show is good. It's the first CC show on the, on the Arrowverse that feels like Shazam. And a little bit of Captain Marvel and Sam Raimi Spider-Man and a bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I like it. Because it's something lighthearted. It's got color in it. The opening, badass. I'm not going to say anything. It, you See it for yourself and you'll see what I mean. The opening is one of the coolest openings ever. If only Green Lantern had an opening like this. Instead of stupid narration and showing stuff that we don't know about. And putting horrendous effects in our face. Yeah, this, I, and I can understand why people are into it. There is some drama in it, but it's not overly done. Like the movie starts in, a, in Christmas time, just like in Shazam, in the opening when the kid is, you know, with his father and his brother in the car. There's nothing like that, but it's in Christmas time, so that reminded me of Shazam. And this is in the same universe. Shazam is in the same universe as Star Girl. I would love to see them in a movie together. And this is basically on the Justice Society of America. You know, the team that was forgotten in Legends of Tomorrow that were barely in it. Star Girl was in like two episodes and then disappeared. The only ones that stood home, stood there alive was Amaya and Commander Steel. Everybody else was forgotten. Here, I love the costume design. I think the the you know the, of, the, of the what I've seen so far. I think it's 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 practical. It looks shiny. It's basically a female Captain America, but for DC because they don't have a Captain America there. They got a Captain Britain, but they don't have a Captain America. Um, and like I said, the the move the show has a great cast. Breck Bassinger is adorable. As Courtney Whitmore. I think she's perfect for the part. She has a smile on her face. She is, you know, bubbly. She has a, a personality that, that's beyond just the staff that she gets, which you know, you saw that in the trailer. She's interesting. And they, they de-aged her like they did with Spider-Man, uh, you know, when they hired Tom Holland over Andrew Garfield. That was that worked because he's actually young looking. He doesn't look like he's 30. Here, you know, it works. Um... Yvette Monreal is Jolanda. I don't think we've seen her yet. She's one of Courtney's friends who becomes a member of the society. Oh, well, that, that hasn't happened yet. So, Angelica Washington is Beth, the black girl. She's fine for what, what we've seen. The villains I thought sucked. So far, I know it's the pilot, so I can't say too much, but the villain I thought was kind of lame. He has force powers, just like every villain in the Arrowverse has, and he talks psychically, which is what I've, I've seen that before already, guys. Even in Star Wars, I've seen it. So it's nothing special. Um, I like uh, Luke Wilson as the fa as the stepfather. Uh, you know, Pat Dugan, Stripe E from the, he's in the flashback with uh, when when uh, when Courtney's a little kid. I'm, I, that's all I'm gonna say. Amy Smart. I've always loved this actress for the past twenty years. I think she's gorgeous. She's very talented. I loved her in Road Trip and the Crank movies and everything. She just has this sexy like. Uh, you know, like a feline, feline face that I just love. Like she has these gorgeous cat eyes and and that white skin, just yum, 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 yum. Even at forty, she's still attractive to me in her forties. How old is she now? 
She's a 44. She still looks like she's 34, guys. She doesn't age. She's a beautiful wonder. And as the mom, I get her. Her and the the daughter, we're going to get the relationship more in the in the next couple episodes. And there's something good. Don't underuse her like you did to Andrea Roth in Cloak and Dagger because she was barely in it. She was drunk and, and was barely around. Um, who else is in it? Neil Jackson as uh, Jordan McKent. Is a founding member of the Injustice Society with the power of cryokinesis. Oh, yes, the, the guy with the ice powers. Okay, yeah. Um, and like I said, the effects look really good. Some of it is a little wonky because you know she's she she jumps on she you know it, you moves with the staff and everything and it and it's a lot of CG, but it doesn't look bad. It's not like Green Lantern, I promise you. It's not a CGI suit. And um, also, like I said, I like the tone of it. it. Like it's lighter. There's some jokes in it. It's not too jokey. Because that's Shazam more than than Star Girl, and I like the fact that they're they're going they're building this girl up so that she gets and when she gets in the costume we can root for her. Unlike the hobo with a stick, where in the first movie she can do everything, she doesn't even even the stick can't do everything. She can do everything. Why? Because reasons. This doesn't have the female agenda, Kathleen Kennedy. This is more and more what I want from my DC shows. Not pandering SJW crap like Batwoman. That's not what I wanted. No one wanted that. That's why Ruby Rose is gone. Because we didn't care about her. She was flat, boring, and not a good actress. And not even attractive. At least Breck is young, cute, and has a lot of energy. And, and she's not boring to watch. She's like a Disney Channel star that I, I could actually get behind. It's like if Dove Cameron had a little sister. Which is weird because they have, they're close in age. But anyway, I like this show so far. I like the look of it. I like the, the the opening. The music is good. The the the, the musical choices they made. Uh, the the you know the the tone of it. It, it. it got some darkness, but not too dark. There is some blood in the in the pilot. So if you think it's just completely clean, no, there's not Power Ranger sparks here. There's blood. Uh, you know, uh, Breck bleeds a couple of times, and also she hurts a guy, and he bleeds from his face. But that's all I'm gonna say. I don't want to spoil too much because there's a lot of things I want to talk about. When the, when the show gets to its finale of season one. There's a lot of potential in the show, DC. Don't drop the ball, please. I've been looking forward to this for five freaking months before this god-awful lockdown. And it's paying off in dividends. I'm glad this didn't get pushed to next year because it already got delayed a, a year since it, it was made. And I'm glad it wasn't just on the DC streaming service because I want to I wanna experience this show too. I like this. This is the kind of female-driven superhero show I want to see. Because with Supergirl, I've been let down the last two seasons. Uh, Batwoman, I never gave a shit about them. Legends of Tomorrow, I like the women in it, but most of them. But the guys usually overshadow them now. Uh, in in the in Arrow and the Flash, they put like too many female characters in it just for because. I don't know because I guess the CW is run by women. I have no idea. But Jeff Johns did a good job creating the show. He's created most of the Arrowverse. And hopefully he can continue to do so. He's 47 now. And he does a good job. I mean, he, um, if, and he also did the screenplay for Wonder Woman. So it's 84. So it should be fun like this. Put agendas to the side, guys. We're going through enough already. This is what I want to see more from the, from the, uh, DC extended TV universe. Because we don't need any more Batwomans. Gay agendas are us is not for us, especially my the nerd pack, which is mostly consistent of guys. Yeah, there's not one girl in the nerd pack. I wish it was, but it's mostly guys. We like to talk about girls. Yeah, girls that we're interested in. Yeah, that. Breck Bessinger's adorable. I know I'm old enough to be your older brother, but she's adorable, guys, and she's legal now. When she did Bella and the Bulldogs, that was a long time ago. Didn't care, but now. She's coming into her own, and she's gonna be she's gonna be a knockout for guys. A lot of guys are gonna favor her over the hobo any day, because she has go golden hair, a cute little smile, young, vibrant, energetic, a good actress. She's not like stumbling in her lines like this, or with the beaver teeth like Felicity Jones. This actually act actress has a chance if they if DC will give her the chance to shine, and I really want this show to do well. So if you haven't seen the pilot, watch it. It's worth your freaking time. And that's all I can say about the, the Stargirl pilot. It's worth your freaking time. It's not perfect. Nothing is, but it was great. It's a good start to a show that could be the best show of 2020 so far. Because all my other shows are on hiatus or 
they got delayed because of coronavirus or um, they're not coming until later on this year, like Blood and Treasure. I hope that comes back soon. But this is a good start. Good job, DC. You made a show that you, you, you got your first home run of 2020 because you failed with Birds of Prey. That flopped. You failed with your finales to Flash and Supergirl. This, was your, this wasn't your strike three. You finally hit it out of the park. And thank God, because I thought I was going to be stuck with another bad TV show with, you know, agendas. But no, it's not like that. It's a lot better than I thought. But thanks for watching, guys. Take care. And the next review will be in June the 1st, Director's Appreciation Month. Hopefully I'll survive this catastrophe and, and do another video for you guys. But until then, see ya.